Can racial reckoning actually happen on a political level? If you ask Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, the answer is yes. In 2019, the Democratic governor made headlines when a photo of a person in a KKK robe and another in blackface surfaced from his uh, 1984 medical school yearbook page. The one in blackface is believed to be him. Democrats and Republicans both called on Northam to resign, but he survived a scandal, mainly due to black Virginians who rallied around him. A New York Times article published today delves into how the scandal actually changed Northam for the better. The governor said, I made it very clear from when this happened that racial equity was going to be a top priority for the remainder of our administration. Northam sat down with black political leaders and asked, what can I do? And they told him, and he delivered. He allocated more than $300 million to for HBCUs in the state. Under Northam, Virginia became the first state in the South to abolish the death penalty. Just last week, govern the governor signed a bill to reduce the number of people behind bars for probation violations. During the signing ceremony, he acknowledged that mass incarceration disproportionately affects people of color. And he ordered the removal of several Confederate references and statutes from the state, including that of Confederate General Robert E. Lee. Can President Biden learn a thing or two from Mr. Northam? Remember this promise Biden made to black America during his victory speech? The African-American community stood up again for me. You've always had my back, and I'll have you. While black voters helped deliver Biden's victory, I don't think that most will blindly support and I believe that they fully expect him to deliver on his campaign promises from voting rights to criminal justice to education. But don't just wait until you're trying to dig yourself out of, out of a colossal scandal like Northam to make good on your promises. In the words of Boards the Men, Let's not wait till the waters run dry. Joining me now is Brittany Cooper, professor of women's and gender studies and Africana studies at Rutgers University and co-editor of the Kronk Feminist Collective. Professor, thank you for joining me. So yep. is there something that Biden can take from what Northam has done in Virginia? I mean, first of all, I thought you were going to quote Boys to Men's End of the Road and say, don't let us get to the end of the road, <laughs> Biden, before we get there. Um, but yeah, look, I think that Biden has to be even bolder. By nature, he's a centrist. He wants to play nice. He wants to make friends. But he has the same problem that his Democratic predecessor, Barack Obama, had, which is that he has an exceedingly obstructionist Congress. And so he's going to have to get rid of this sort of narrative about bipartisanship uh, and really go for big, bold plans. The reality we know is that it's not just the obstructionism that's happening now, it's this full court assault on voting rights across the country. And so Republicans are playing dirty to make sure that black people never have the show of political power that we exhibited in November and in January down in Georgia. Uh, and so Biden is going to have to deliver for black people uh, and he's gonna have to do it in order to keep us motivated. And the narrative about obstructionism is just not going to be enough. So so, for instance, he, you know, his USDA tried to ameliorate these decades of racism towards farmers. And then, you know, 12 Republicans, uh, 12 conservative white folks sued and said this policy, you know, is, is discriminating against us because we're white. He's going to have to have another step in the strategy plan for what happens when he tries to show up boldly uh, and he gets pushed back at every level. Black people certainly understand the challenge of that, but we still need him to actually show up and govern for us because his ability to get anything done is solely because we showed up and showed out in November and voted for him at higher numbers than we did for Barack Obama, which is, you know, almost right. unbelievable. Right, yeah. and, and, and you're right, right? So none, none of us are under the delusion that there is not obstruction in Congress, right? So it is, it is not, we're not saying that if you do something differently, it's gonna soften the Republican opposition to what you're doing. I do think, however, people want to see you go down fighting. 
What, 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 what I think is happening is there are a lot of feel-good phrases around specific, particular subjects. And, 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 and I do language for a living. I am not saying that language does not matter. Saying the right words, sure. that is an important thing to do. However, the right. actions of putting it all on the line for the black people who put it all on the line for right. you just does not seem to be there. Am I wrong about that? No, look, I look, I actually think Biden has been more progressive than even he wanted to be. Uh, you know, I think he got a big, you know, sort of package pass when we're thinking about COVID relief, which was significant for black folks, right? Um, I think that he has, you know, come in and said, we'll end contracts with private prisons, which is one step in the right direction. It's really just renewing a Barack Obama era policy. But I think he's got to hit much harder in terms of making this Justice Department go out and actually come very hard against these folks for January 6th. That's a racial justice issue. I think that he has got to use his bully pulpit to shame Joe Manchin into supporting the For the People Act. Because if he doesn't, it doesn't matter if he does bold progressive policy moves if he loses in the midterm because Republican voter suppression bills have have passed and have you know have done you know have been successful. And so yeah, he has you know, he has to make clear that it's not just enough to say, you know, we have an office of racial equity, right? The work that Susan Rice is doing, um, but people want the advertisement, the taglines, and then they want the policy solutions behind that. And he's got to figure out what that looks like. I'm slightly more patient because I do think that he has been fairly bold in these few months by saying white supremacy is a problem. What happened on January 6th was a product of white supremacy. We've never seen a president be that unequivocal about the problem of racism in American public life. And I do think that that's important. But I also think that he's got to put his money where his mouth is and, and really back it up. And the reality is that if the Congress continues to obstruct him, then he's going to have to be bold and governed by executive order. And while that might not be his preferred method, he's dealing with the rise of fascism on the right. And so trying to reason, uh, you know, what does the U.S. say? We don't negotiate with terrorists. Well, they've said that domestic terrorism is the biggest threat facing the country right now. So he's got to stop Stop negotiating with them, even if they're in Congress. Exactly. I mean, and, and here's the thing, right? You, the Northam example is problematic because Northam would have yeah. done none of that had he not been <laughs> caught in blackface and needed black people to save his neck, right? And so, know. you know, there there is a pattern in po political life where people right. turn to the black people to save right. me when I am on, uh, you know, I'm on the cusp and I'm, and I'm, I'm about to go under. You, you saw, yeah. it, when, you know, when um, uh, Cuomo in New York was in the thick of his scandal, he showed up in Harlem and stood behind That's a right. bunch of black people <laughs> who said wonderful things about him. That is what they That's do. Right. And so, I, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't want it to have come to that for Biden, but I, is there another path? Is there another way to pressure them where there, where there, there is not existential, where they have to do something on the racial front. Look, I, look, I think that we're going, I, I think we're going to see some of that. I mean, he has appointed a pretty diverse cabinet. I think it's interesting that he is, he's trying to give Kamala like a portfolio that's actually going to set her up. It, but I don't know if he's setting her up or it's a setup. It's, it's not clear yet. Uh, you know, how, whether she's going to get the least successful. <laughs> and, and, you know, because he's kind of giving her all the, the biggest, stickiest issues. And so she's going to have to have some serious black girl, black woman magic about it. Um, but I think you're absolutely right. And let's not equivocate on Ralph Northam. He played from the Donald Trump playbook, right? He got called out and he just basically refused to leave. And that's what happened with Trump. Trump did terrible things. I mean, he committed crimes, but he also was just a terrible leader. And so every time he got called out, he just refused to go. And so a lot of these white men, whether they're on the left or the right, are learning that even if you're in the middle of a political scandal, just simply don't cede power. And I do think that that is the lesson that I want Biden to learn. He too had a very sordid history when it came to his treatment of the black community, whether we're talking about the crime bill or we're talking about a knee hill. And he managed to float over all of that because he is a white man. But now he's got to get in this position and really play hardball and say, look, I need a big infrastructure bill that puts everybody to work. It actually helps black women because it has these 
these provisions for healthcare workers. And quite frankly, we're overrepresented in those industries. So there are even some big just liberal policy solutions that are going to have a disproportionate impact to help black communities, separate and apart from his racial justice agenda. I also think that the racial justice agenda can't just be about crime. I'm so tired of people saying, we're going to help yes. black people and we're going to do it in two ways. Yes. It's going to be going to reform the criminal exactly. justice system and also we're going to help y'all get wealthy. It's like, just help people not to be living paycheck to paycheck, right? Uh, because they have good jobs, because people feel safe, because they have access to good health care, right? Um, and, and, and some historic redress of inequity as well. But also, all of the problems right. that we have in Black communities don't stem from the criminal justice system. And so he's got to have a more, more robust view of what we need than that. Professor Brittany Cooper, we have to have you back. Uh, but thank you again for coming on tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure.